so, well, this is coming up, but I can start the talk anyway. Um, I'm Brooks Davis, sorry I'm late. Um, I'm blame myself a bit. Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, using FreeBSD to uh, promote uh, open source development methods. Um, this is largely not a technical talk, it's more about um, trying to um, create cultural change within our company, um, trying to encourage a more open internal software company. Um, our, uh, our, 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 we, we have uh, 20, about 2,500 engineers who work for the U.S. government um, in the area of national security space, and uh, all, all of these engineers are, are in, in a wide range of fields. And uh, interestingly, though, a vast number of them, with no correlation to what field they were trained in, write software. Um, which leads to some very interesting results, um, and as you can probably imagine. Um, because of that, um, you know, we, we, we've evolved this very insular and uh, closed software culture where uh, people will, um, where, 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 where our uh, developers will, uh, will be writing code, they'll often be writing code with, you know, the things they learned back in 1965, 1970, um, it's worth noting that our average engineer is, uh, has about 30 years of experience. So uh, we're a fairly old company. Um, and, and we're also widely distributed. Um, so that's another key point. Now, in, in our current culture, we have two main camps. Um, there's a set of classic software engineers, and these really are software engineers. They build big, huge, important things. They build ground systems, they build uh, uh, flight control software, they build onboard processing software, um, and all that sort of thing for, uh, for satellites, launch vehicles, you name it. They generally get the job done, um, or rather they, they help contractors in the Air Force get the job done, but uh, the process is huge, it's expensive, and if you've ever actually tried to, if you, if you try to do anything in it, quite painful. Um, you know, any, any, any change, even fixing a typo in a comment, requires filling out a paperwork. Um, it's, it's, it's incredibly insane. Um, we have a, a, another camp of people, though, and that's the people who write engineering support software. These are the people I was, I was talking about a little bit ago. And they are, um, you know, as, as I said, not trained in this. They're writing software to solve today's problem, whatever the heck that is. and. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, though, that software continues to live on and grows, um, giant snowball becoming an avalanche. And uh, there, there, there are cases of software that has hundreds of thousands of lines of code that people are using that's suddenly, you know, it's become a product in some cases. We're shipping it out to people. And yet, you know, the processes they're using are very old. Um, many of them may be writing as so though they're writing an APL, you know, programming language where if someone else could read your code, you're doing it wrong. Um, and, uh, or, or, or as I say here, it's a, uh, you know, advanced revision control is the ones who have a file server somewhere, and then they have a whiteboard where they block the files. Um, and, uh, you know, this, this is, so they, they, they don't see any of the things we all take for granted. Um, in many cases, they don't know they exist, they only know about the previous culture, and they're like, I want nothing to do with that, and rightly so. So, uh, yeah. So the problem is obviously, um, there, there are many of them, so, some of the bigger ones are, you know, they've got their code, they're hiding it from each other, you know, from other people. They're, uh, they're kind of afraid to let it out for many reasons. Um, and, and for instance, you know, there's, there's, you know, they think it's ugly. They're probably right, but they think it's ugly. Um, so that's a problem. Uh, there, there are also cases where, you know, they're, they're afraid people are going to misuse it. Um, that's, that's a very popular, very common belief. And somebody else will use it, they use it wrong, and the developer will be blamed. Um, and supposedly it's even happened in a few cases. People are a little weird that way. Um, you know, code's also our head. We have one case where we're, we have some Fortran code that's widely used. It uses features that were deprecated in Fortran 77. Um, <laughs> you know, it had 30 years, no progress has been made. Um, and and, and yeah, many, many obsolete practices. Um, yes, yeah. As I say, no revision control. Um, people don't know when things broke. It's just it did. 
Um, it may have been because somebody checked in a bug, or it may be because two people did something that you know, caused an interface to change and, and didn't adapt. Um, features often get lost. Um, we've, we've talked to people who are customers of one of the uh, pieces of software um, externally. And, and yeah, one of their comments to us was at some point just off the cuff was, it'd be really nice if we're under revision control because sometimes features go in because we ask for them, and then in the next revision they disappear. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You know, probably because somebody didn't, you know, they didn't manage the locks right, and the guy who was building it put the feature in, didn't copy it back to the server, boom, it's gone. Um, you know, repeat, releases are repeatable. Um, yeah, and, and, and they waste a phenomenal amount of time and effort to manually doing these locks, manually merging their changes, they generally don't know about diff. Um, it's uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, so we're uh, promoting project that I'm working on, called AeroSource, it's uh, promoting open source methods, um, proposing them as an alternative, <coughs> um, and, and using FreeBSD, for instance, as an example of you know, what you can achieve with these methods, that you really can build big, huge production systems that are uh, quite you know, capable of, of you know, doing, doing useful and interesting things without this classic software engineering methodology um, and with, with methods that actually, we, we hope, will actually be less effort than their current complete lack of anything. Um, and, and so, uh, and, and it's worth noting that one of the things we push a lot is that open source methods are necessarily low friction in some sense because developers largely have other things going on. Um, Kirk said at the previous year of ESDCon uh, that uh, you know, one of the things you have to deal with is that um, in an open source project <coughs> is that your project is the last priority of your developers. They've got vacations to go on, they've got jobs, they've got to eat, they've got family, all that. Somewhere down the line comes your project. So you, know, you have to be reasonably good at keeping the friction down. Um, you know, we're also hoping that uh, if we can have people start making their code accessible within the company instead of hiding it from each other, maybe the six or eight or 10 <coughs> implementations of some, some pieces of code will converge into one good one instead of six or eight or 10 bad ones. Um, so, yeah, and, and the fact that we're using open source tools as well helps reduce the objections to cost. There's still the objections of, I don't have time to learn this, et cetera, et cetera, but at least the stuff doesn't cost them anything. And, and the way we're currently funding it, we have internal funding that, so they don't have to pay. Um, we're sort of spinning the concept as enterprise source software. It's exactly like ordinary open source software, except it's inside only. There's no, by, by putting your stuff in our repositories, there's no implication that this is going outside. And in fact, that would be you know, a violation of company practice. You would, it, to, to release software outside, it has to go through a release process. So you know, we, we, it's, it's actually fairly hard for us to convince people that really this will work. But uh, that's the, you know, where we have, it's, 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 uh, it's working. So it's, now it's not, it, it is worth noting that it's not merely using open source software within the enterprise, it is in fact, you know, this, this process of doing open source development just that we draw a line around it and it stays inside the company. Um, so, but of course enterprise source can become open source software and we hope that in some cases that will happen. Um, that we really will start to uh, produce, our, produce more open source software in cases where we have pieces of software that are not um, you know, restricted for current reasons of national security or whatever. Um, and of course, another, another key point is that open source software can come in, obtain one, you know, and if say it's an abandoned project or we've had one case of a, of a government run project, so it's public domain software that doesn't really have an active maintainer, we can bring it inside and maybe hopefully we will some, sometime, at some point bring that back out, but uh, things can come in that way as well. So uh, you know, the AeroSource project, um, you know, our goal was to produce, promote this enterprise source software um, to uh, provide developers with good tools and sort of modernize the process. For now, we're not trying to bring them up to today. We're, we're going for, you know, we'd be good with getting them up to the mid-90s. Um, you know, CBS, well, subversion, um, and, and that sort of thing. You know, distributed version control is probably way beyond them and, uh, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, we're, we're just trying to sort of raise the bar and, and, and you get people up to the, you know, the point of sort of the default in, in open source software in terms of tools and maybe get them a little better than that in practice. 
Um, you know, if you look at our source code, most people don't really know how to use the tools. It's pretty obvious. Uh, they're not really using their best extent. So, um, to do this, we want to implement a, a source forge like thing. Um, so, you know, we had to have version control. We had to have bug tracking. We needed some way for people to maintain a website so people could find their stuff and, you know, find their documentation and all that. Ideally, it needed to be well integrated. And of course, since we were talking about enterprise source software, it had to be internal access only. Basically, you know, our own source work. Um, you know, also, because of our funding model and because of the fact that you know, eventually our funding will go away um, and, and we'll have to sort of steal money from other places or start taxing the users, and because all the people in our group are vastly oversubscribed um, and, and, and very inappropriate, we needed to, uh, it needed to be easy to use, operate, maintain, modify, whatnot, because you know, we, we've got to be able to do this fairly quickly. Now, we looked at a number of options. Um, source port, the main software was right out. It was too expensive. You know, and we certainly weren't going to stand up the, the ancient piece of junk that they did release five years ago. Um, we actually had done GForge in the past. We have a GForge install. It's even on the same machine. Um, it was far too much work to do upgrades. Um, and we, we actually had um, track sort of running in it in a multi-project mode in about half a day, which was about, well, where, as the G, last GeForge upgrade took a week. Um, you know, that that should, should give you a tip off there as to what's mm -hmm. going on. Another one we should have looked at but didn't know about at the time was uh, Retrospectiva. It's a re-implementation of track in Ruby on Rails. Um, track is, in fact, in uh, um, PHP. Um, Python. Sorry, yes. It's, it's, uh, I've not modified it much myself. Um, or there's, of course, the, the sort of, you know, throw it all together. You know, we already do a lot of media wiki. We already had CDS and subversion stuff. We had a Bugzilla server, but, you know, no integration at all. There are ways you could tie them together a bit more, but we sort of decided, you know, we're not going to do that. So, what is the difference between, uh, between uh, the last week, between the track and the, the next one? Um, so, retrospectiva, so the reason we should have considered retrospectiva, they're both a bit immature in some areas. Track, for instance, has, has a wiki. The, the biggest problem that we've run into is that it has a wiki that if two people were editing, the second person loses their edits when they get submit. Um, you know, there's no dip, there's no nothing, it's just boom. Um, so, yeah, retrospectiva is, is a result of some people's frustration with, the, uh, with that not getting fixed and with some other patches, such as a patch to make the wiki store itself in subversion, uh, not get fixed. And so it's a just it's a re-implementation. It's a little less mature in, in some other areas, um, but we might have gone with it had we found it at the time. Because where it's immature is not not areas we're necessarily worried about. But I don't know that we would have. It's it's hard to say. Um, and and problems we perceive with track or perhaps with its culture. Um, so you know, there's the stack. So track subversion. Um, you know, the usual uh, uh, lamp, or in this case, uh, VAP. Um, so there's a, there's a screenshot. Um, you know, you've probably seen them. The, the easiest URL I give you is probably varnishcache.org. Um, it's a track project. Um, actually, one, one, one thing worth noting here is uh, this little uh, sidebar on the, on the uh, left shows all the projects um, that, that we currently have. Um, and that's a little, you know, little toy we added. Um, now, so promoting, promoting all this stuff. Um, so we've been doing, you know, how are, how are we doing this? Um, we, we've been doing uh, internal and external presentations, talks about open source, talks about open source methods, and talks about enterprise source, both inside and outside. That's, um, you know, inside we're, we're directly promoting, outside we're doing development. Sometimes we'll have people from our company show up in these outside things. Um, and, and also, I think it just gives us some credibility that other people are willing to come and listen um, in that regard. Uh, so, yeah, you know, we've, we've also been giving demonstrations of all the tools within the inside the company, and in some cases, we've managed to enlist portions of upper management who have said, you know, who told their projects that you know, if you'd like to keep getting funded, you need to adopt these tools. Now. Um, one of the things we do is we use the FreeBSD project as an example. Um, we 
show you know, what can be achieved. And uh, we also uh, provide examples of working practices, um, because there has been you know, research written up on how FreeBSD works. We've got a number of great uh, uh, presentations about that. And it also uh, gives examples of how you can manage a repository and whatnot, and, and different communication things. Um, one example, you know, nice material we use, we use Robert's uh, How the FreeBSD Project Works, you know, and, and uh, you know, go through and you give the talk. It usually takes us about like an hour and a half, two hours, to uh, Robert's uh, one hour, or uh, in the uh, case I'm showing here, uh, the 20 minute version, um, where he puts multiple slides together. Now, um, so we, we've had, uh, so what are our experiences here with, with getting people to use the software? Existing users of CVS or Subversion are like, you know, great, you're maintaining this, it's backed up. Um, you guys know what you're doing around the Unix system? You know, great, move over, you know, right away. Uh, and we've had a number of people do that. Um, a lot of people have been moving, moving their subversion repositories over um, and, and that sort of thing. Also, new projects seem to be interested. We're getting a number of sort of, you know, startups, and uh, that's been going well. Um, people clearly are realizing in parts of the company that this whole version control thing is a good idea, um, and, and, and maybe they should use it, and, you know, gee, they're these tools, so they should, they're going to come and use ours. Um, so that, that's been good. Um, we've also been using it uh, internally, um, using many of the tools, since we've already got this infrastructure here, um, sort of like the first thing, we've been using it for uh, system management, um, you know, tracking, tracking our configuration on various machines, using the ticketing system to track issues, um, using it on, uh, on my uh, cluster to uh, you know, track, track what nodes are, are broken and, and that sort of thing. However, we have seen some strong resistance. Um, you know, so there's some objections. You know, there's, it's my code, you know. You know, I'm, I, I can decide whether people can see it or not. Well, actually, not really. Um, you know, standard contract in the US is a work for hire contract. And, uh, and so, you know, really, the company owns it, and it's up to them to decide how it gets used. Um, it's embarrassingly bad. That's, that's, some, that's sometimes true, and I, I can sort of sympathize with that. But, you know, if you just hide it, it will never get any better. Um, or it's very unlikely to if you have you know, no training and no experience in you know, how to develop modern software. Um, you know, we've actually had this, this thing that rewriting basic, basic algorithms is a, you know, a rite of passage. Everyone should write something to parse two current element sets for uh, satellite orbits. Um, you know, you know, it's always good to, to re-implement early 60s technology, late 50s technology. Um, you know, or, or perhaps it's a pointless waste of time. Um, in some cases, it might actually be true if you're talking about some of the, the orbital al algorithms and that sort of thing, where we're building on the, on top of those. But there's no way that this prevents it. I mean, we're, we're talking about you know generally upright, you know, reasonable people who uh, are not going to go off and cheat when they're given this assignment. Um, you know, it might be good if they found it themselves. I mean, that would be a sign we'd succeeded. But if they need to do this, and they're doing it for their education, you know, they're adults, they have security clearances, you know, they're, uh, and, and whatnot, so probably you can trust them to implement it themselves. Um, another, another objection is only I can maintain this code. Um, you know, in some cases that's probably true, but that's more because it's a big pile of spaghetti, um, or, you, or it's hand-rolled, uh, um, you know, fget line. Um, in, in uh, git c and realloc for every byte, and uh, you know, but you know, your coworkers generally in this case aren't all that aren't stupid. You know, we our, our goal is I didn't really talk about back at the beginning. Um, one of the things is that you know, one one guy I know is giving a talk on, on our company. He likes to say you know, we've got to be the smartest people in the room when we walk in with a contractor in the air force because we're the ones who are tasked with oversight and making sure everything's on on task and on track. So you know. We do a lot of work to hire good people, so you know, you know, it, it may be true that the code, you know, only has one maintainer now, but hopefully we can fix that. I think a bus factor of one is generally bad. Um, you know, only I can use it correctly. You know, this comes back to this uh, this case of people saying, you know, if I let people have the code, they might go out and compile it and run it, and then they might misinterpret the results, and I get yelled at. Um, you know. Another one is people might submit changes and I'd have to work on it. You know, I'd have to improve it. And this happens. It, it 
I, I, I'm continuously flabbergasted when people express that, and I'm like, isn't that a great problem to have? Surely we could find funding to ensure that you know you could keep up with this. Um, you know, wouldn't it be great if there were 20 people contributing to your project and making it better? Um, but apparently not. <laughs> not for some people. So, some projects uh, in Aerosource. Aerosource itself is in fact in Aerosource. Um, it's, it's the main project. The web server just redirects to a track instance, and uh, you know we, we keep all of our management scripts and everything in there. Um, working to tie more forms in, so when you create, you know, when you request an account, it goes and creates a ticket and whatnot. Right now, it just sends us email and we do it. Um, you know, uh, Aeroports, which is our internal ports collection. I'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, Avant is an internal system for uh, taking telemetry streams from launch vehicles as they pass over different uh, receiving stations on their way up to orbit. Um, you know, take off from the Cape, fly over Ascension Island, um, another island out in the Indian Ocean, and they pass between these tracking stations. They're received by multiple antennas. There's jitter. Um, there's strange design decisions where things are time stamped after they, not, not at receive time or not on the vehicle, but after they go through a long, complicated network with variable latency. Um, <laughs> And so you've got to stitch all of this back together. There may be compression and expansion of the uh, of things. Things are lost due to plasma flare and whatnot. And so this is tools to do that. Um, Fellowship is our cluster. We keep a lot of things in there. Uh, Firewatch is a is a, a sensor web project where we're looking to build uh, uh, tools with uh, uh, different different um, uh, little, little moats out in, out in the hills uh, in, in Southern California to uh, just hatch fires and uh, provide alerts when there's possible fire condition. Uh, SOAP is probably our biggest success thus far. It's a, it's a project that we actually ship out as a product. Um, it's, a, it's a tool for viewing satellite orbits, doing analysis on them, doing parameter studies, and a variety of other things. And we're just getting started here. Um, so, aerosource maintenance. Um, one of the big things is we eat our own dog food. As I said, all of our stuff is in there. We do all these all the management there. And uh, you know, the front page of the uh, of, of our project and our main presence is in fact just another instance um, of a project. Yeah. We, uh, we use ba pretty much basic FreeBSD, mostly standard ports, uh, plus some uh, special local use ports. Um, we're, we're modified PAM LDAP modules because their uh, corporate LDAP scheme is not right. Um, things like that. Um, we also do you know, backups, offsite storage, that sort of thing. Um, so aeroports. Um, it's aerospace specific ports. Um, we're, we're using a, a, a set of tricks that uh, Scott uh, Hetzel uh, posted. Um, where we create an arrow directory inside it. It's essentially a miniature ports tree with the whole the normal two level hierarchy. Um, and then we've got a, a set of tools. We've got a little, we've got a confusingly named program called APT, um, which uh, is the aerospace ports tool. It wraps um, uh, port, up, port snap and subversion. So it keeps an up-to-date copy, it uses a nice feature column and added for me to allow you to create the index, only having to run the uh, make describe in the uh, subtree instead of doing the whole 16,000 ports. And uh, it, it uh, works very well. It's, it's also an in incubator for external ports. Uh, the new, the replacement uh, uh, root certificates port uh, started there because I needed one, and I knew the other one was gonna die eventually because I thought we could kill it. And uh, so uh, that, that was the start. Um, yeah, uh, here's the tool. I'm afraid we have to stop your group. Okay. Um, well, I'm on the conclusion page. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we, we are attracting customers. It's doing pretty well. Open source methods are attracting developers and we're gaining traction there. Um, you know, in the future, we want to you know, do more do more tutorial sort of things, group automation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and uh, there we are. <coughs>